Hello, I'm Chris King. I'm the Plant PAX Migration Business Development Manager. We know users today have challenges when they have to go from a legacy system and move it over to a modern DCS such as Plant PAX. We have a lot of chance for improvement. And what I'd like you to do is think about what improvements you could have if you changed your legacy system to a new modern system and all the things it could bring for you. For example, you could have 5% more production. You could have 20% less unscheduled downtime. You could have 50% less safety incidents that happen in the plant. You could have 25% uh, less spares needed because you have a brand new system. Those are some of the things I want you to think about while we go through this presentation. One passion I have in my work is to provide helpful tools, services, and methodologies assisting users in modernizing their legacy DCS. The ARC Advisory Group maintains that there are $65 billion worth of legacy systems nearing end of life. This puts many users and their systems at significant risk. If you're one of those users who feel like you're in this situation, I hope this video will help you. These risks include dealing with your older systems that are many times poorly supported and difficult to maintain, particularly with an aging and increasingly retiring workforce. Compounding this is the challenge to provide enough financial justification to convert these older systems into a modern DCS. In order to achieve the productivity benefits of the connected enterprise, it's an imperative to modernize your DCS. One of the earliest decisions you're going to make as you go down the modernization path is whether you can replace your entire system at one time or if you could use a phased-in approach to your modernization. Before we demonstrate some phased solutions, let's talk about some other tools and services that Rockwell has which will help you modernize in phases or steps to reduce the risk and decrease your downtime. We of course offer OPC servers which provide interconnectivity capabilities. These come in two hosts, either a PC or a special application module in a control logic rack. The SAM and the controller have similar industrial specifications which may be a useful benefit. It's important to note that in any of these phases, we prefer to use a wide range of conversion utilities for the database, the logic, and the graphics, which provide excellent reverse engineering capabilities and allow for some conversion to control logic's functionality. A critical point to make here is that we believe it's better to take the time to innovate and not just replicate the old DCS code, thus creating a better system, which is part of that financial justification of modernizing a user's DCS. Today I'm gonna to show you a couple of solutions designed to reduce risk using phased migration tools. I'm here in front of our demo unit specifically showing some modernization products to convert legacy competitive HPM controllers to control logics. These products are designed to reduce risk and significantly shorten downtime during transition from legacy TDC3000 to Plant PAX. The first tool is the Process Manager or PMIO Scanner. Then I'll show you how cabling solutions work. What we're showing here is a demonstration of the Aperion PMIO scanner. On the right, we have the Process Manager IOP cards powered up and as you can see, running without the HPM controller. These blue cables are the PMIO link cables connecting to the PMIO scanner. This scanner is shown in a Control Logix chassis and it's in the run mode. Run mode here means it's controlling these IOPs as if they were native to the Control Logix. There are two other modes. There is a learn mode, which optionally uploads the IOP configuration, and then there's shadow mode, which is a read-only mode used while the HPM is still in control and is typically used in very early stages to fully check out the control logic and graphics on Plant PAX. Above on the left here are the two field termination assemblies with simulated field wiring connected to the two IOPs showing in the demo as well as some LEDs to prove the communications. We have a control program set up in the control logic to show the analog inputs and digital outputs. This analog pot changes the analog value from zero to 100, and as the value rises, these red LEDs show the value increasing as the input increases. You'll also see that value change on the logic's control designer screen. To show the scanner sending an output, you'll see this top green LED is driven by digital output number six, as shown here. And so toggling the value between zero and one changes the output. Thus, Rockwell offers yet another phase tool
tool called Custom Cabling Solutions. These cables are used to eliminate the I.O. completely and cut over to new ControlLogic 1756 I.O. For this step, we use a cabling solution that is pre-wired to Rockwell I.O. and this cable replaces the Process Manager FTA cable. This maintains the existing wiring to all the field devices and sends the signal straight to ControlLogic's I.O., which minimizes the risk of rewiring all the I.O. signals and saves significant time. I'd like to mention one more important solution. Rockwell has the capability to convert the C200 controllers directly to ControlLogic's. This is a very simple and extremely fast hardware cutover. Since the C200 chassis is maintained, and all new ControlLogic's controller and I.O. cards are inserted in the chassis. This is a very low risk conversion since it requires no field rewiring to the terminations and they're simply just reconnected to the equivalent 1756 I.O. cards. So in summary, I hope you've learned that Rockwell can help you with your challenges to reduce risk and to provide quicker, economical, phased migrations using tools such as the PMIO scanner and our cabling solutions. For more information, please see the link provided here, and I thank you very much for your time.